about the color functions in text because if you guys realize that CSS doesn't follow the standard way that other programming languages write functions. So there's this particular proposal that puts changes the syntax from the comma separated ones that we are used to. And it's actually not a change, it's just an addition. So the old syntax still works, it's just seen as legacy syntax while this new syntax is the sort of the official syntax so to speak. Um, there's a article explaining why the guy came up with this because there, there were some pushback um, because I don't know programmers like to argue about stuff. So so he sort of justifies the, the decision. And again like, it's a new variant syntax it's not a replacement. In other news uh, Chris Coyle wrote a book called Practical SVG. Basically it's a it's an introductory uh, a book about how you can use SVG in your and why you should use SVG and I think it covers a bit of not so much animation but really just the basics of SVG. I think it's helpful for anyone who's trying to use move toward using SVG in your uh, front end development projects. Uh, okay, so browser releases last month because on average I think most browsers stable release will come out every month. So you probably see this every month. But um, if, if you're using Chromium Opera 39, uh, containment, I think I mentioned this a month or two back. So now Opera 39 supports the containment property. Um, one of the bugs, WebKit appearance none for the meter element is now supported because um, the appearance property has been um, has not been well implemented at all. Uh, so there's the next iteration. So we all know that CSS uh, has level, so level one, level two. Now we are at level three. The few, the next one is um, level four. <laughs> but um, <coughs> so the they're gonna be they're going to actually re-implement the appearance property properly because the current implementation is very, very messy. So if the old, they are like, I think the list is about 30 odd vendor prefix because the original intent of appearance was so that you can style your, you can make the element look like a native platform UI element. For example, if um, you wanted the your select box to look a certain way you could or, or like search Check you could box, follow the input, native uh, platform picker, pretty much any yeah field. ideally they wanted it that way but it didn't get implemented properly so now the only value that most people use is none so that they can reset it with CSS so they figured they're like gonna rewrite it and re rewrite the whole spec properly so that's that uh, and what's the contained property? Oh, so the contain property, uh, I'm just trying to put this in a nutshell, is that um, it's more of a for performance related issues in the sense that you can sort of define that this is the this is the only element that you want uh, that, that will do to be paint. So let's say you have a change in this particular element only. Uh, in the norm all normal accounts, the browser may be will be paint every single element on the screen. But what this specification wants to do is that if you know that this is the only thing that's, that will need to be repainted, you can actually specify, okay, just repaint this bit. It's more of a performance benefit thing. Maybe next month we can actually cover the contain pro con the whole containment property in more detail. If you give us a demo or something. Probably possible, yeah. Okay, cool idea. Um, so for Firefox, a <laughs> uh, couple of Improvements. I personally like the cup one because I use cup all the time. So now you can use nested CSS cup. Cup is a, actually a very useful property. I because with cup it makes responsive design a lot simpler. In like you can do like a cup equals hundred percent minus because your margins are fixed <coughs> for example. So okay, like hundred percent minus two m's and makes your life easier rather than you having to use JavaScript to do all the calculations and everything. Cup one is is like. Like one of my favorite tools. Uh, oh, I like actually this this article very interesting. CSS mix then mode can review browsing history. Um, it so it was a bit more complicated than I could understand, but basically it allows you to introduce Boolean algebra into some for some this this guy had a demo, and if anybody can actually 
we, we implement the demo and explain this further, I really appreciate some of our cards. Because it was way more than my little brain could comprehend. Uh, and oh yeah, this new experimental CSS font feature called font display. Uh, not implemented anywhere yet, but this guy wrote a because it's behind a flag, so this guy played around with it and he uh, wrote an article about it. Sounds quite interesting. It's more to address the flash of unstuck text issue that people tend to have if they use like web fonts and stuff. So that's August news. Uh, links are all clickable and in our GitHub repository. So now we are going to go into the New York Times article analysis discussion thing with Chris and.